and I stopped going to that study altogether. I don't, are you going still? Okay. Now I feel better, so I'm good. <laughs> Appreciate it. Good, how are you? Yeah. Oh, Thank you for coming tonight. This is our final spring stop in the Charge On Tour. We saved the best for last. And that's our favorite fans here. We have a couple of special guests here tonight. We're honored to have Dr. Alex Cartwright, our president. And you're probably wondering, before I bring Dr. Cartwright out, who's this guy with the microphone? Well, my name is Rich Savosik, and I'm filling in for the 29-year veteran voice of the night, Mark Daniels, who's in Clearwater tonight broadcasting another night's baseball victory, 17-1 to one over Memphis. They advance to the semifinals on Saturday, so hopefully you all tune in. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Alex Cartwright. He was named the president here a little over a year ago, and with his steady leadership, we made it through a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. Put your hands together for Dr. Alex Cartwright. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to be here in Oviedo. It's so good to see all of you. And with this many people around, I at least have to try it once. Go Knights! There you go. That was special. Uh, this is really, for us, just a special place to be. UCF is a remarkable institution, and when you look at what we accomplish, it, the, you don't have to look very far. All you have to think about is that Kennedy Space Center, almost 30% of the employees there are graduates of this institution. We put people in space and we make space possible. So it's so good to be a part of an institution that has that type of ability. And my, uh, my family is here too, my wife, Melinda. Uh, our, our daughter, Alyssa, is visiting. And my son Andrew is here too, our son. So give it up for them. Uh, they, we don't get together very long, very often, so that's why I had to say that. Uh, if you'd asked me, you know, in January where we'd be, I remember it, I think it was a weekend, and I got a call from Danny White telling me that he might be leaving to go somewhere else. And then a week later, we find out that our football coach is going and. We're not sure where we're gonna end up. But I knew one thing. I knew that UCF was a special place and that there were a tremendous number of people out there looking to come to be part of what's happening here, to be part of Night Nation. That, that confidence helped us to actually take a little bit of time, a couple weeks or so, but we were able to find who I think is the perfect person for our athletic director and that is Terry Mohaja. So Terry... Ter Terry's going to tell you a lot about, you know, a lot about uh, all of the things that are going on in athletics and all the successes we're seeing. And you heard about baseball earlier today. Uh, but I'll tell you that as soon as I interviewed Terry, I started to realize that that he fit within what we were looking for. And I have to tell you too that I don't know if Terry's told people this, but when he first interviewed with me, he was actually sick really sick uh, and uh, still that enthusiasm came through and then the second time I talked to him I I tell him this jokingly he was a different person because <laughs> he was actually healthy then um, but it was clear to me that, that that he had everything that it took and I I said to him I said well everybody had put a lot of pressure on me that I needed to hire an outstanding athletic director and I've done that so now your job Exactly. His job was to hire an outstanding football coach. 
And I will tell you that he said to me jokingly, I heard him say this jokingly, that he didn't get, I don't know if he said it exactly, I'm going to probably misquote you, but it was something like, you didn't get a lot of A's in your life, but, but he got an A plus for his hire of Gus Malzahn. So, so it is so great to be part of this institution. Thank you all for being here. It's so great to see so many of you out. It, it's wonderful to know that we're turning the corner, that we're moving to the next time where we're going to be together in the fall with athletics, and I look forward to seeing all of you again in the near future. Thank you so much. Go Knights! And as Dr. Cartwright mentioned, Terry Mahajan, the new Vice President and Athletic Director, but before he gets a chance to talk and steal the microphone away from me, I first want to thank everyone out there for their generosity in the Knights Charge On Fund. We set a goal for $2 million. We are 85% of the way there. So thank you, give yourselves a round of applause. It was much needed in this pandemic era and your support is greatly appreciated. And I'm not gonna say anything more about the new Vice President and Athletic Director, Terry Mahajan, because I've known him way, way too long and there's some stories I am not allowed to tell. So I'm just going to turn it over to Terry Mahajan. Go Knights! Oh man, this gives us great energy. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, the groundswell and the energy and talking to all the folks, this is exactly why we're out here. And I cannot tell you and express to you enough how excited uh, that we are to be here. So thank you so much to coming tonight. Um, couple of quick things, and then I'm going to bring up the coaches you don't want to hear from me, but made an announcement that we're back to 100% capacity in the bounce out. And, and, and I think I heard a little rumor today. I need to confirm with the boss. Boss, I heard the tailgating is going to return to normal. Is that true? Tail So awesome. So now I'd like to bring up some of our coaches. Coaches, come on up here. Please. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so before I turn it over to all the coaches, I we just wanted to take a time. It's a, a little bit of time to talk a little bit about our coaching staff. You hear a lot about some of the other uh, football, and men's, men's and women's basketball, but it's been an amazing semester. As you guys know, all the sports were kicked to the semest this semester. So this semester, this group of folks, this group of folks, including uh, Coach A, had four conference championships. <laughs> NCAA tournament and two sweet 16s. I can tell you with great certainty and you can fact check me, there's not schools that can do that in 10 years and we did it in one semester. How about that? How about that? Great job. So a couple other things I wanted to just talk about. Not only are they getting it done on the playing services, but they're getting it done in the classroom too. This will be our 27th year of a, a CUME GPA, meaning all of our student athletes have a GPA of 3.0 or better, the 27th semester. And this will be our ninth semester of a CUME GPA of 3.2 or more. So we are getting it done in the classroom. We're getting it done on the playing services. So people that say, oh, we don't care about athletics, we just care about, we don't care about academics, we just care about competition, all that stuff. You know what? I can show you the great correlation that if you're good in the classroom, you're good on the playing service. So I'm very proud of that. So thank you. Great, great work. However, your achievements of today become your expectations of tomorrow. Your achievements of the day become your expectations of tomorrow. So we'll continue to win conference championships. We'll continue to graduate our student athletes. We'll continue to get a good GPA because that's what we value here. That's exactly what we value. The other thing that we're going to do that no other school in America is going to do is you're judged by your alumni. We have a saying, NLI till you die. The day that you sign that national letter of intent to the day you die, you'll always be a knight. 
And that means something. That means you're judged by your alumni. There you go. That means something. And it means something to us, too. Harvard's Harvard because I'm not the students that are there now. It's the students, at what they do after they graduate. So we will prepare our students. Not only will we prepare them, when they decide to come to UCF and be a knight, we're going to guarantee them a job or graduate school placement. Guaranteed. We will be the only school in America that does that. They don't do it in this school two hours from here. They don't do it at Texas. They don't do it at UCLA. They don't do it at Ohio State. They don't do it at the school south of here. They don't do it in Michigan. But we do it at UCF because that's what we value. We're putting great alumni like you all in the community. That's what we value. So thank you. I appreciate it. So. One last thing, how many people have seen, uh, someone asked me about this today, how many people have seen Kung Fu Panda? <laughs> right? Okay. Kung Fu Panda. All right. The great philosopher, Master Shifu. All right. If we only do what we can do, we'll never be more than we are. The great philosopher, Master Shifu. If we only do what we can do, we'll never be more than we are. There has never been an athletic director, a head coach to build a program on their own. We need you. We need alignment in the university. We need a president that's engaged and you can see that he is. We need an executive cabinet that's engaged and they are. So with all of us together, we can do things that's never been done before. Be the first. It's easy to go be a caretaker somewhere, but building the foundation is special. And that's what these folks have done up here. And to learn more about what they have done, I'd like to introduce our first head coach, Todd Dajane, volleyball. Go Knights! I tell you, you want to know about competition, how competitive we are. I'm sitting next to Emily right here. And uh, we were talking about grade point average because that's what Terry was talking about. I said, you know, we had a really cruddy semester. We had a 3.5. She said, yeah, we had a 3.7, so I kind of gave her the eye. But even that wasn't highest because cross country had higher than that. So that's the competition that even goes on friendly between the coaches. Uh, we had a great year this year. Went undefeated in conference, won the conference championship. Thank you. Um, and, you know, that's something, uh, that's something that I'm proud of. But the, the thing I'm proud of more than anything else, and as alumni in this area, you're going to be proud of this too, is that we have almost 70% of our athletes graduating not with a bachelor's, but with a master's. So they're playing their fourth or fifth year, they're graduating with a master's, and they're market ready to work for you. That's my job, is not to just make them a good volleyball player. My job is to make them ready to be your employee. And so we take that very seriously. So thank you very much for the support. We can't wait to get going again this fall, get back on a regular schedule. And I don't know if I pass this down the line or do I pass it? Down the line, Emily. Because if you don't pass it, you'll stay on the mic all night. So I'm like, I gotta follow Todd, and you know. But I mean, between you and Terry, I'm like ready to run out here and compete myself. But uh, I'm Emily Marin. I'm the women's golf coach. Um, exciting golf coach. We had a great year, and. Um, you know, all of these coaches here, we're all so proud of each other, and we want to thank all of you. A lot of people don't get to come out and watch our sport, but a lot of you tweet at us and you like it, and I can't tell you how far that goes with our student athletes. You might not ever see a, a women's golfer hit a shot, but if you can tweet at them, trust me, it, they love that, and we can feel that support. Uh, we, we competed for a conference championship, came up short. We got an NCAA at-large bid and came up two shots short of making the NCAA finals, but this is what you're going to like. We went to a tournament and we beat those Gators. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't get to play the Gators this fall because we had a conference only, but we will get them this fall. Okay? This fall, I'm Tiffany Roberts Hadak. I'm the women's soccer coach. I believe Tim and I, we're a husband and wife duo. Tim's out there somewhere with the kiddos. Um, we're going on our ninth season. We are so proud to be knights and be here for our ninth season. Very, very excited. Awesome to have a new AD, um, Terry Mahajer, and it's, very, it's an honor to also be around these very awesome, successful coaches. So you look around, we've got championships all around here, and it's hard to keep up with all y'all. So um, we gotta bring one this fall, because we're due. Um, so 
challenging fall this year for us, um, for sure. Um, but we are excited for this coming fall. I'd love to see you guys out there. We have an incredible schedule in front of us. Um, the last time we hosted UNC Chapel Hill, which is my alma mater, so I love beating the Tar Heels. They are coming back so um, to our stadium this fall. And the last time they came, we did beat them. So we will plan to beat them again this fall. We've got Penn State. We're hosting Penn State. Um, so we've got a huge, huge schedule this fall. So we will put our student athletes to the test, but we will be prepared and we'll be ready and we'll be fit because we're excited that we'll be full capacity again and just excited to be out there and have a regular season again. So guys, thank you so much for all your support. Love being a night and love having you guys out here. Thank you. Everyone, um, I'm Cindy Ball Malone. I go by Coach Bear though. That's, that's what I know. Um, softball coach. <laughs> had a historic year. Uh, it actually started last year. We were seventh in RPI in 2020 and um, our girls just you know took it and, and rolled on and it's much like what Emily said. We were in the conference final and came short. Uh, we made a regional final which hasn't been done and I think since like 2015. Um, so that was awesome. Um, we walked off on the Gators at home. I think one of the most eventful times, um, we actually uh, were on our way to go play Florida after we beat them already, and um, our tire blew. And they thought it would be funny to pick us up on a Gator bus. So we rode their bus to their place and beat them seven to nothing again. So. say is while you guys are all tailgating out there um, for the football game just take a look you'll just turn and look at that softball field and pick out a good seat because we're going to have an even better team next year so thank you guys all right um, first of all Scott Calabrese with with men's soccer uh, the, the Gators don't have a men's soccer team so I can't brag on that sorry guys if they did we'd beat them I'm 100 percent sure uh, but uh, we, we had a very, very good season this year. Um, started out actually one and three. So uh, it, it looked a little bleak, but the, the guys absolutely put their nose to the grindstone and we won eight in a row. And uh, won, won the regular season conference tournament for the third year in a row. Uh, won, won the playoff championship, which we got to host at home. And, and by the way, that environment was unbelievable, and, and it's thanks to you. Um, thank you for coming out and supporting us. Uh, thank you for driving these guys on. They absolutely feed off your support. They feed off you when you're in the crowd, your, your intensity, your, uh, your devotion to UCF. So, so thank you for that. And, and then after we won the conference championship, we, we ended up moving on to the final 16. So record year. Um, Again, appreciate all your support and hope, hope to see you next year. How you guys doing? Uh, my name is Brian Kenyako. I'm uh, head coach of women's tennis. Um, this, this is my first time doing this out here, so this is, this is awesome to see this crowd and we appreciate the support. And uh, Our team had a, an awesome year. We finished uh, 11 in the country this year. and. Um, we, uh, we were able to, to defend our title of uh, the American Conference back to back, so that was awesome. And, um, and more importantly, we went undefeated in the state of Florida, beating the Gators twice, the Hurricanes and the Seminoles. So that was nice. And um, you know, we had an awesome home crowd. We got to host the NCAA tournament down in Lake Nona this year, and uh, both men's and women's tennis programs were able to host the first two rounds, and it was a, a great experience. We ended up falling short in the Sweet 16 to Duke. So, Coach Dawkins, sorry we didn't get to revenge that one for you, but uh, it was an awesome experience. We had a great tailgate, and so many of you guys showed up to support, so um, I appreciate it, and we'll keep going. Go Knights! Yeah, it's a, it's a tough group to follow, so uh, just hope I can hold my own up here with these guys and gals. But we had, uh, I'm John Roddick, I'm the men's tennis coach, and, uh, nice. and we, we had a, a great year this year. We, we were, I think it was 21-4. and four. Um, We finished 11 in the country, we won the American Conference, 
We did not beat the Gators, uh, so now that's what makes me, my self-esteem was just dropping as Eric kept saying it. But, uh, you know, but they did win the national championship, so it's a, it's a high bar there. So we, we played them tough, but uh, we, I could have been prouder of my guys. We, we had, a, I think, a 14-match winning streak at, at, at one point. Um, and for them, it was the first ever American Conference so, uh, championship. So that was uh, kind of get that monkey off our back, and hopefully we'll have a bunch more. Um, you know, the best thing about it, we have everybody coming back. We had, uh, we had three All-Americans on the team, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, and then we have, uh, you know, some good recruits coming in, and one of them is my nephew. He's the number one recruit in the country coming in, so hopefully he can, he can help us. Yeah. So, all right, well, go Knights! A lot of coaches through the years, and these are some of the finest coaches and people that you will ever meet. So if you have a son or daughter out there who is college caliber as a player, please send them to UCF. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our two basketball coaches. First, our men's head basketball coach, Johnny Dawkins. Coach Dawkins in his short tenure has taken the Knights to two postseason appearances of Final Four in the NIT and the first ever win in the NCAA tournament school history. And our women's head basketball, Katie Abrahamson Henderson, or affectionately known as Coach A. And what she has done in her short tenure is nothing short of phenomenal. Back-to-back -back NCAA appearances, sandwiched about around a COVID year, which would have been a third appearance had it not been cut short. So, round of applause for our two head basketball coaches. Coach Abe, you're up first. Ladies before gentlemen. I'm up first. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out. It's pretty awesome to see people, I have to tell you, because we've been quarantined, we've been in the bubble, we've been in hotel rooms, we've been, I mean, it's, it's crazy that this season went by and we didn't see any fans, even when we traveled. So it's great to see everybody out. This is a beautiful place. Oviedo's awesome. So everybody live here in Oviedo? Well, it's beautiful. I know Coach Dawkins lives in Oviedo, too, but I'm not supposed to tell you where he lives. But um, we're excited. I mean, we finished the year. Obviously, when we went to the NCAA tournament this year. Sorry, I can't see. The sun is right in my eyes. I want to see your pretty faces. But uh, it was a great, great year for us. We actually finished unofficially tied for first, but there was some little mix-ups, but uh, ended up going to the conference championship. We lost in the conference championship from that other school down there. I can't remember their name down there. I don't really say their name, but we lost to them, but we were fortunate enough to go to the NCAA tournament this year, which was super awesome. I mean, it, yeah. Obviously, you guys read a lot that was going on in the NCAA tournament, I'm sure, if you paid attention. Um, and all of it was true, actually. So it was a great experience for our players to kind of see that um, and watch a lot of women um, empower themselves and have voices and speak out for, you know, women, women in sports and just women's basketball in general in the NCAA tournament. So uh, our players got to experience a lot of that. Uh, next year, I'm super excited because uh, this transfer one time, well, how, do, how do you say it? The, the I stay, they get to stay, what's it called? <laughs> the super season. So next year, which I'm super excited about, everybody's coming back. Yeah! Everybody, our uh, three seniors are staying. So Moss Nikaba, who's one of our best players, she's staying, she's coming back. Uh, Cortesia Saunders, starter, she's staying, she's coming back. Janaya Walker staying, coming back. Plus we're adding, we already added four other players, so we're gonna be loaded! Yeah. So hopefully I don't mess it up. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to mess it up. I just go watch Johnny's practices and get a bunch of ideas. 
and then I look like a superstar in games, and, and then I go after the games and I say, thanks, Johnny, you taught me how to do that. Thank God you told me how to do that because we probably would have lost that game. So, no. <laughs> but we're super excited to be here. Thanks for coming out. Um, all your support you give to our programs. I mean, our, I have to say, I've been in a lot of schools. We have some phenomenal coaches. Like, phenomenal. All the coaches that were up here, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of, like, I look up to them. A lot of them have won conference championships. A lot of them have been to the NCAA tournament. I mean, all these coaches up here, they won this year. It's amazing with what we had to go through. So, um, you know, you got a, you got a great group of coaches here. Terry's great. He's, he's just high energy. Our president is super supportive. So, as much as you can support our programs, come out, cheer for every, every team, every program. I mean, who doesn't want to support a winner, right? All right, thanks for coming. Well, it's tough to follow that. I mean, Coach Abe, uh, one, she's very humble. Uh, she's one of the best coaches I've ever been around in our sport, men's and women, doesn't matter. Uh, she can flat out coach. Uh, the record shows that. So just proud to be you know, with her, and uh, it's been great you know, for both of us being here together for a while. Uh, and as well as all the other coaches that we have here, the standard of excellence here is unbelievable. And uh, it's set, of course, by like our athletic director, Terry, his vision for our, for our programs and for this university in athletics is amazing. It's bold, and that's what we need. So we're just going to attack it and you know, turn UCF into one of the top 25 programs in the nation. We know we should be there. And of course, under you know, President Cartwright's leadership, nothing could be done without that. He's super supportive of us and what we're doing. And so that just makes our job every day coming in just that much nicer. So we're just very excited about the mission at hand. We're all excited about what we can accomplish. And for us, you know, we're two years removed from the tournament. And, uh, you know, we want to get back there, just so you know. We re and, we're ready to get, and we're ready to get back there. And, and for us, you know, this past year, they, the stoppages was difficult. You know, we started off the season, of course, uh, playing Auburn. We beat Auburn. We started off, you know, beat Cincinnati. We start off oh, in state. Well, we beat Florida State. For, you know, at, at the time we beat Florida State, you know they had won 27 straight home games. They don't lose there, and so us to go in there and get that win was something really good for our community here. And so I'm uh, very excited about what we could do. And then of course we started getting stoppages, and that made things very difficult for us. But our guys showed a lot of character. They kept competing, kept fighting, and at the end I thought we were playing some very good basketball. So. Really good though, but the thing I want to share with you is when you look at that preseason schedule, you know, we played the toughest preseason schedule of any team in the country last year. Our, our strength of schedule was number one. So now coming up this year, we're playing another great schedule. I mean, we have home games, just so you know, we, Michigan comes and plays us here this year. <laughs> Oklahoma will come here and play us here this year. We'll go to play Miami at Miami. We'll go play Auburn at Auburn. And then lastly, we'll play Florida State again in the Orange Bowl Classic. We'll get them back at our place the following year. So we're very excited about our schedule and we're always going to schedule as best we can. We like to play the best because that's the only way to prepare us for our conference season. And then for us, you look at what's going on right now, we have a lot of talented young players returning. You know, we have the likes of Isaiah Adams, who was all rookie team this past year in the American Conference. Darren Green, one of the best shooters in our conference. CJ Walker led the league in shot blocks this past year. And I could go on and on with our upperclassmen like Brandon and, 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 uh, and guys like Brandon, Sean Mobley, guys that were very good in supporting roles for our team as well. So we have a very, I think, good team returning, as Coach Abe said. Most of our guys have committed to returning to our program next year, so we're excited about what we can do. You know, I'm not sure if you've heard, we've also had the, you know, number one, I think they, they tell me this, I'm not sure about this, but I hear that we've had the number one recruited class in program history this year coming in. You know, so we're very excited about those young players. A point guard is one of the best point guards in the country is coming. We have an off guard that's really, really good as well. With, with a wing player coming, a four-man and a five, all really 
really exciting players and guys that are ready to fight for UCF. So really look forward to having them. But none of this can go well if we don't see you. There's no excuses this year. I just heard our president give us our marching orders. Everybody can be out here. <laughs> so let's make sure that we all come out and, you know, and, and pull and cheer because we're only as good as you are. And so just understand that and we realize that as coaches. You, you make us go, so please come out and support us. So we're going to turn it over to you. I appreciate everybody who wrote out a question for Coach Dawkins and Coach Abe. But I have one question for Coach Dawkins before we get started. And you know what that is, Coach. You mentioned that we're going to play Michigan. Juwan Howard, part of the Fab Five. MBT had four other guys helping. So one-on-one, -on -one, if I was a betting man, my money would be on you. I would bet on me also. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question from Terry from Winter Park. And this is for Coach A. Looking back at this season, while moving forward into next year, what have been the keys to building such a successful culture in your program? That's a broad question, but great question. I, I think it's uh, consistency, honestly, with my staff. I mean, my staff has been with me the whole time I've been here, and they're, they're phenomenal. And, and with that consistency comes the same message and the same um, um, program that we run every single year. And then, obviously, we, we recruit a certain type of young lady that is family first, academic second, basketball third. And we also recruit a certain style of player. I mean, obviously a lot of you have seen our games and we press pretty much a lot. Um, so it's a fun style. Uh, and and that's, not for, that's not for any soft-hearted athlete. I mean, you, you have to be in great shape. You, you got to want to do it. You got to, I call it, you kind of have to be kind of dogs. You got to want to get after it a little bit. And so we've been fortunate to be able to recruit those kind of players and, um, and stay in our program. But um, I, I just think it's the philosophy coming in and, and the, it's set now. And so when we bring new players in, we have great leadership from our captains. I mean, I talked to somebody here um, today and he mentioned to me and I thought about it. I was like, oh wow, uh, last year we had KK Wright. She was first team all conference player. She averaged about 22 points a game. And this year coming up, we had to figure out like who's gonna replace those points. Well, we did it as a committee, we did it as a team. Um, and we had to do it a little different and we, you know, we won that way. So it's just a consistency of how we do things in our program and, um, you know, and, and I'm really consistent, so I don't change up very much, but we, we just try to use the players we had and just, you know, and that press is probably the most annoying thing that anybody can ever play against, so we try to keep that going. Yeah. Coach Dawkins, you mentioned your schedule a moment ago, and this question is from Allie in Oviedo, and she asks, take us behind the scenes of putting together an NCAA tournament type schedule? Well, I think if you're trying to put together an NCAA you know, type schedule, you have to challenge yourself. And that's why we've always done that. Every year we've been here, we've tried to schedule up. We, try to, we, we don't try to avoid any major opponent. And sometimes they'll avoid us and they, they won't want to play us. But on our end, we're saying yes every time. We feel that if we're playing that type of opponent early in the season, it prepares us for a grueling conference schedule which also prepares you for an NCAA tournament run. And so that's what we look to do every year, and we'll be doing that again this season as well. And a similar question for Coach A. How is your schedule coming along? Well, to be honest, it's like Johnny. Like, we try to go out and schedule, and it's a great thing, UCF fans, because nobody wants to play us. Because you know why? They don't want to get beat. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. Um, and so... Right now, our schedule is really good. We're going to be playing Arkansas. And they, they were in the NCAA tournament, so we're playing them in the SEC uh, American Conference Challenge this year, and it's going to be at home. Last year, we played LSU. We beat LSU at LSU. Um, and they're in a uh, football five school, so uh, that was awesome. Uh, we're going to play the University of Iowa. I don't know if you know I'm from Iowa. So they always try to get me. Yeah, there's my Iowan. Met him today. Uh, they always try to get me to come back there, and they were they actually 
went to the Sweet 16, so we're playing the uh, University of Iowa, we're playing Virginia, um, and I'm missing somebody that we're playing. Uh, I know Stanford's calling, but... <sighs> they just won the whole thing, guys. You think I should play them? Yeah! Get them here in Orlando, that's Woo! what we want. Bring him. I don't know, I'd have to get Johnny to call Tara and uh, talk her into coming just so she can see him, but our schedule is gonna be really good. And, and to be honest, everybody, we need to schedule up and we need to play the best because that really gives us the best chance to uh, get an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. So I, I'm just like Johnny, like we wanna play the best and my, my players, they wanna play the best. So that's uh, kind of how we do scheduling. We try to really try to get top 50 uh, RPI teams in our gym or we'll return there. So we really try to schedule up also. Thank you, Coach. And this one comes from one of our youngsters in the audience, for Coach Dawkins, from Layla in Delaney Park. When did you decide to be a coach? Uh, that's, that's a great question, Layla. You know, I, I decided to be a coach. Uh, it wasn't a quick decision for me. You know, when I retired from the NBA, I was in a position where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And believe it or not, I wanted Terry's job. I wanted to be an athletic director. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, as I was going through a management program to do that, uh, Coach K walked over to me, and one of his assistants had just taken another position as the head coach. And he said, "You ever, you ever thought of, you ever think about coaching?" And then, whenever your coach says something like that to you, for you guys that play sports. You know that means I was starting, I was getting into coaching because I couldn't tell him no. So, and so my career ended up going down, and down that direction. And you know what? Yeah, I thank him to this day for that. It was the best advice he gave me to get into coaching. I'm so fulfilled giving back to these young people I get a chance to work with. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, been, it's been an amazing experience. I'm so happy that he invited me to be a part of it. Coach Abe, I'm going to throw the same question at you. When did you decide to become a coach? I did not want to be a coach. Uh, you don't go into you don't you don't like go and uh, go to uh, school and think I'm going to be a coach. At least I did, and I'm sure Johnny did. And we went in to get a career and something else, right? Uh, and so I actually, long story short, I actually wanted Terry's job too. Me and Johnny are coming out now. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I my mother really wanted me to get my master's degree. So after I got done uh, playing uh, college basketball at the University of Iowa, um, I, my mother really said, "I you need to get a master's degree. That's super important." So um, I ended up going to Duquesne University. One of the coaches there hired me there to get my master's degree, and I found that I really enjoyed empowering young women. That's why I wanted to do it. I felt like a lot of these young women that were playing college athletics really didn't use the resources and everything they could to uh, make a better life for themselves. Coming out of four years of college, you're on a free scholarship and you know you have this major university and you got school paid for for free. Let's use all your resources here and let's really empower you to get a great job walking out. And, and I felt like a lot of young women didn't do that. Um, and so that's really what got me into uh, coaching is um, I really saw a part that I wanted to do, and and then I had sent my resume out to a bunch of people, and I got hired from a lady that used to be the head coach at Duke. Um, she hired me at the University of Maine, and it kind of just went from there. So my biggest my biggest thing, and I, it's Johnny's too. We just like to empower young people, and and obviously basketball is a, a huge part of that. Thank you, Coach. Coaches, let's give it up one more time for two of the best college basketball coaches in the country. Okay, real quick. Um, when I was, I was hired on a Sunday, when I got the call from Dr. Cartwright, and he offered me the job. It took me all about one hour to tell my wife and all that kind of stuff, okay, hey, look, this is a real opportunity. The first call that I made was to Coach Malzahn. First call. Haven't signed my contract, didn't do any of that stuff. The first call I made, I wanted to say, Coach, what's your appetite with coming back to coming back coaching? And he said, Oh, I'm I'm ready. Then he started, you know, his preamble about the future of college football. If everybody, he's gonna tell you all about that stuff. I heard it all, it was great. I can feel the energy. So I have my press conference happens. We uh, fast forward to Thursday, we start vetting some people, and I called Coach Miles and I said, hey, Coach, we're going to interview you, okay? Dr. Cartwright and I are going to interview you. So we had a couple other folks on there as well. And first thing, 
I did when I interviewed him. I said, hey coach, uh, have you ever gone through an interview process? He goes, actually no, I've never, I just get offered jobs <laughs> and get them. So it's the first time he's ever been going through an interview process. But I wanted to make sure that he was ready to come back and excited. But as we were talking, as Dr. Cartwright and myself were talking to him, you could see him. He didn't really know how to use the Zoom, but his wife came in and helped him during the, the Zoom process. Christy, thank you, Christy. No, no, he would have got the job if you didn't help him because I wouldn't have been able to interview him so thanks anyway so he kept as we were talking to him he kept et etching closer and closer to the edge of his chair and I could just feel it how excited he was and how he wanted to be here and you know what that's exactly what he did we're so lucky and I want to introduce your new head coach Gus Malzahn <laughs> And that's a true story, okay? So here's how it went down, all right? When the job came open, all right, I was planning on maybe doing some TV, setting out next, you know, the, the next year. And I told Christy, I said, we're going to take a serious look at that. So we thought through all that. And then when Terry was hired, I told her, if he calls, we're, gonna, we're going there. So just get ready. Five minutes later, he called. And then I thought he was just going to offer me the job. No. All right, we got an interview. I had interviewed since high school, all right? So that's a true story. And I'm not real good with Zoom, okay, and all that, setting it up. That is a true story. And as a matter of fact, give it up to my wife, Christy, over there. Christy, wave. All right. We're going to be married 33 years tomorrow, all right? Yeah. She needs an award or a medal or something like that for putting up with, with a coach for 33 years. So I'm real blessed. We do this coaching thing together, and so I'm real blessed to have Christy. All right, now I need to get a lay of the land here before we get going. So how many were at the Peach Bowl in 2017? Y'all were loud, okay? Y'all were loud. And I'm coaching some big games. The crowd never affects me, all right? But it was somewhere in that third quarter, early fourth quarter, the, the old, old tide changed, y'all felt it, and y'all were loud, all right? And I just went, wow. So, to go back, you know, um, I always felt like, and I told my staff this probably after the last five years, if the right guy ever got to UCF and would stay there and build it, everybody else would be in trouble. Now, now that I've been here for three plus months, I believe it even more. Everything is set up. You heard me talk about the foundation. The foundation's been built. Three New Year's Six Bowl games in the last eight years and have won two. There's not very many programs in America that can say that. And then, 70, yeah, I'd clap for that one. That's, that's hard to do. 72,000 students, 325 living alumni. The average age is 36. They're all on social media. Everything is together. Then we've got the, the Orlando and the surrounding area. I mean, this place is happening. And everything is coming together. I've been real blessed to be a part of some really neat things. And, and, and it feels the exact same way. And, and what I would tell you, we put ourselves out there. I mean, you've heard me say the future of college football. That wasn't like pre-thought of. I just, on the way, after we accept the job, I'm on the plane to get here, and it just came out natural, because that's what I believe. So that's not like a recruiting, uh, marketing deal. No, that's what I believe in my heart's going to happen. But to do that, it's going to take all of us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take every one of y'all, our, our, our students, our fans, and everything that goes with it. Now, I've been, I've been real pleased with, 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 our, with our players. So I got hired, and I think it was three weeks later, we went out on the spring practice, and we, we got to know our players as we're coaching them. Here's what stood out to me. They didn't have a coach for three or four weeks, and not one guy went in the portal. Now, I've never heard of that, but that wouldn't happen anywhere else. So it tells you about how close the team is, and they got some leadership, and they got some character. So I'm coming into an unbelievable situation, and I've really enjoyed it. We've got a staff, I'm telling you, I was a little worried. I think I got hired on February 15th. And these coaches and these contracts, the, the, it, it, there's big buyouts and all that. And we're blessed to have the guys that we have. And here's the deal. There's NFL, SEC, I mean, there's everybody. That, they know something's fixed to happen. So we had great, great opportunities to hire a bunch of people. 
but we hired our staff in nine days. They're great coaches, but they're better people. They truly care about our players more than what they can do on the field, and that's really rare in college football. So uh, it, it's been a fun uh, three plus months, all right? And, and right now our players got back. They took about a two week uh, a break. They got back last week and now they're working out with our strength coach. And we're gonna have to have a really good summer, all right? We can't coach them. The guys gotta go out there and, and, and work on their own. We need to get stronger, we need to get faster. Our strength coach, Chris Dawson, is the best in the country. We were hired him from Kansas State. Yeah, go ahead and clap for him. He's a guy that, he's a guy that every big program in America has tried to get him away from Kansas State, you know, the last, the, the last few years, but he chose to come here. And so, so that's real special as far as that goes. All right, let's go ahead and let's get some questions. All right, Coach, this is from Carlos in Oviedo. And I'm going to add a little bit to it. This is your third. Uh -oh. I, I know. This is your third program that you have taken over. And everybody talks about the first 100 days at a new place. This is day 93 for you. Wow. So in your first 100 days, or your first 93 days, what's the biggest challenge? Kind of take us behind the scenes of setting up your philosophy of your program. Yeah, you know, I think the big thing for me is, is the most important thing is our players and developing true relationships with our players. And so we tried to hit the ground running as far as that goes. I know I met with every player for 15 minutes. We waited a month later, I did the same thing. Uh, just are trying to get to know them, them get to know me. I mean, if you're in their shoes, their coach left, they didn't have a coach for a month and then all of a sudden I show up. So it's been a, the relationship building uh, and our coaches the same way. And then the football aspect. So we went out in the spring and everything was simple. I just wanted to lay a foundation and we did that. And then the next piece is, hey, uh, recruiting, which recruiting is a huge piece. If we're gonna get to where we're gonna be, that we're saying we're gonna be, we gotta recruit. We're off to a really good start. And everything has just been confirmed since I've been here that I believe before I got here, that this is an attractive place for top players in the country. And you've heard me say, we're going after the top guys. I could care less who, who they're thinking about or, or, or this star, that star. We're going after the best people. And you're going to continue, see us continue to compete for those. And over a period of time, I just believe once we get face to face with them, and once they, 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 they get here on campus and get a chance to, to just to see the campus, the city, and everything that goes with it, it's going to be a very attractive place. Coach, I'm going to piggyback on that answer. This is Jeff from Oviedo. He wants to know if there's any big news for June 1st when the debt period is over. All right. So any big fireworks. Yeah, so here's the deal. June 1st. I mean, we've not been able to have any recruits on campus for a year and a half. So June 1st to June 26 is probably going to be the most critical 26 days probably in the last two years of college football. And just competing, just trying to compete to get them to visit. That's, that's the big thing. Our coaches have done a super job developing relationships over the phone, over Zoom. But you're going to see a lot of big time players that's going to be checking us out. You know, we, we've got a weekend we call Bounce House Weekend, okay? And you're going to see that. That's going to be the 11th, 12th, and 13th. we got some big timers coming. And it's going to be fun, and I think, uh, I think we'll be the focus of college football that weekend. All right, I got to ask you then. So, Bounce House Weekend. Can you give us a uh, little snippet of, of what will happen on a recruit's visit? Okay. I, Without giving away all the yeah, secrets. Don't give away I, any I, secrets. People are going to steal our stuff if I say too much, okay? No. So, really what it is, is we've got the top guys we're recruiting. It's a, it's a little bit different than your normal recruiting visit. We divide up in teams. We do some competition stuff. Have fun with them. Have our families there. Our wives, our kids. They get to know us as people, not just coaches. And it's more more of a bonding. It's guys that we know we want for sure. They get around each other. You sell the dream. You sell the vision of where we're going and what we're going to do. And you just try to give them ownership. And so really, that's that's the that's the biggest part of it. All right. So Delaney from Oviedo, she's going to take you back in time. And she asked, "What made you want to become a football coach? What made me want to be a football coach? Okay. So when I grew up." I thought I was either going to play a professional sport. It took me about 10th grade and I figured I had zero chance, so I kind of transitioned. I always knew I wanted to be a coach. 
And I didn't know for sure if I wanted to be a football coach. Uh, I, I coached uh, the boys club baseball. Uh, I coached basketball, coached football, coached soccer. Didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I did coach soccer, right? Um, and then I coached AU basketball once I got in college. And of course, I played college football. And so uh, I tell you what, it, it, it's such a blessing to be able to do what I do. It doesn't feel like work. And uh, it's just an unbelievable blessing to have influence over young, young men. This question comes from Mark. You know, Vito, and, and he wants to know a little bit about your staff. If you can talk a little bit about your offensive coordinator, your defensive yeah. coordinator, and your philosophy yeah. on both sides of the ball. Yeah, G.J. Kenny and Tim Harris Jr., there are two co-offensive coordinators. They were both play calling coordinators in Division I football. They chose to come here. And, and they're both young, they're creative, uh, really assist me. Uh, Travis Williams, our defensive coordinator. I mean, you're talking about one of the elite guys in, yeah, give him a hand. Elite coaches in all of, of, of college football. Our defense at the last school I was at, four out, four, four of the last five years was top 15. He had a lot to do with that. I think he had four straight SEC first team uh, conference players of the year. He's an unbelievable recruiter. He's a relationship guy, just a fun guy. And the one thing I'm going to tell you about watching our defense, they're going to fly around like their hair's on fire, and they're going to tackle, and they're going to be physical. So uh, that's, that's the one thing I'll tell you. And he's got an aggressive mindset. He doesn't like to stay still, so you'll see him running around, jumping up and down. I kind of like to watch him. <laughs> Coach, I know I'm going to ask you a question, and, and Try and get you out of coach speak. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Because I know coaches always say, you know, the most important game is the next game. So obviously that's Boise State. I don't even know if you know who the second game is. But as you look at your first opponent and your non-conference schedule, how does that prepare you for the conference season? You know, exactly right. So, so a coach, you've got to worry about the next game. But as a head coach this time of year, you've got to look at the whole schedule. And you kind of got to plan around about strategically practices and all that. But we do have Boise State. Did y'all see where it's going to be Thursday night? ESPN with the world watching. And I'm telling you, that, that's unbelievable. Really appreciate Terry making that happen, helping that happen. Because we get a chance to play football the first game in the bounce house. Which, by the way, I'm fired up. And I'm expected to be loud and crazy. So, so that's going to that's going to be where where we can show. It'll be a marquee game. It's great for recruiting. All right. And then, of course, you look down the schedule, and obviously, we got some big games. And, and I think today they said there's four ESPN games, ABC game. So it's time. We just got to seize the moment. And uh, but to but to go back, and this ain't no coach speak. What's on my mind is Boise State. Okay, it really is, and it needs to be. I mean, they're a good team. They got nine guys back on offense, and I'm back on on defense. They're well coached, so it's going to be a good one. Put your hands together for Coach Gus Balzad. All right, thank you. All right, I think we have a drawing coming up. And if, uh, should have worn my glasses up here. If your ticket matches this number, you get two club seats to the Boise State game. Eight, six, four, two, three, three. Eight, six, four, two, three, three. Oh, come on, don't be poor losers. Give the guy around round of applause. This is for the 2017 UCF football jersey. Eric, I need your help here. Three, one, one, five, eight, zero. Three, one, one, five, eight, zero. Three, one, oh, there he is, way in the back.
contact you as soon as we get them. So, The next is for a signed basketball by Coach Abe and Coach Dawkins. Four, 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 eight, zero, one. Four, 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 eight, zero, one. Oh, right there in the middle. Congratulations. Now she's mixing it up. So those of you who set your, your ticket on the top, uh, you might be in trouble now. All right, this is for an autographed football. Coach Gus Bell's on. Oh, four, 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 seven, seven, three. Four, 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 seven, seven, three. Oh, right there in the middle. everyone for your support this past year and for all the previous years and your thank you for coming out here tonight hope you enjoyed yourself and we look forward to seeing you on Thursday night against Boise State